open source is for everyone. Hey there, how are you? Nice of you to join us. We learned a lot about open source software, the mini Moo glove and microbit through the activities we did in course one. If you haven't already done the first course, it would be great if you do that before this course. Lesson one explains how to make the glove, but our new glove is pre-made, so you don't need to do it. Lesson one is narrated by the lovely double Grammy award-winning singer and musician Imogen Heap, who inspired the Mini Moo glove. She's amazing. She also, rather handily, explains what open source is. And we're going to learn a lot more about that in this course. You can find the first course at openuk.uk forward slash open kids camp. Once you have a glove, join us here. Or even better, do the whole of the first course and then rejoin us. We'll be waiting for you. Well done on getting that you glove made, one. by the way. At staging it can be done. Oh. Or it might be nice to customize your, your glove to make it a library. bit more you. We look at that in the e-zines through this course. Did I mention the e-zines? Each lesson in this course, and the last one, has an e-zine with helpful info about the code project from the lesson and various columns like the open source hero and a bunch more learning and activities. To work on this course, you will need the mini Moo glove kit and a micro bit. If you don't have a micro bit, you can buy one at okdo.com or borrow one from your school or local library. The lessons are designed for you to do on your own, but sometimes it's nice to work with others. And you can do that too. Lots of people do the lesson in community groups or at school. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to know what the Sustainable Development Goals are, or SDGs. Explain that open source is for everyone and that this is point one of the open source definition, or OSD. And create a program which uses the make code rotation block to spin a globe using your glove. Hmm, have you noticed that there's a lot of discussion about improving sustainability these days? You might have wondered what sustainability is. Just as open source is for everyone, sustainability is for all people and the planet. There are many different sides to sustainability, from climate change to inequality between people of different genders or ethnic backgrounds, to the pollution of our air and our oceans. Sustainability is all about solving these problems. The United Nations has come up with 17 ways to go about doing this, and these are called the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs for short. The SDGs require many of the same principles as open source, transparency, sharing, collaboration and reuse. Open source and sustainability truly go hand in hand and we'll talk a little bit about some of the SDGs as well as open source as we move through this course. Just before we begin work, let's have a quick recap on what open source is. Open source is software for this course which has both the machine-readable object code and also the human-readable source code, shared and freely available for you to see. It also has a license approved by the Open Source Initiative, and that license is really important. Don't worry if that sounds confusing. We'll work out what that means as we go through the course. In this series, we're going to explore more deeply the 10 points which make up the open source definition, which is often shortened to OSD. Oh, and we shorten the open source initiative to OSI. Don't you just love an acronym? Each lesson will focus on a different point from the OSD in a fun way. Now that we have that sorted, let's get going with some learning and coding. Let's get back to that first definition from the OSD. Open source is for everyone. Yes, for everyone. The heart of open source is that when code is shared, it is available to everyone to use and there is no discrimination between people. Anyone can use the code however they like. Isn't that amazing? Everyone can use it as they please, but only so long as they comply with the license. You can ask someone to pay for the code if you like, and they are willing to. 
but you can't stop them giving it away for free if they like. Normally, in open source software, we don't ask for any money for the code, and we all share our code with each other. It's great how people share. It saves us creating the same thing from scratch each time. There are a couple of things to know about licenses. Firstly, American English and English English spell license in different ways. I know, Americans have an S in their license and the British use a C in theirs. But we all do licensing. Copyright is a way of protecting our hard work when we create new code. It gives us some protection for our hard work and stops others using the code we've created. Copyright means that others can't use the code we created unless we say they can. When we make our code open source, we let others use our code. We give them the right to use it, despite our copyright giving us protection as the creator of the code. Let's use the example of lending clothes to a friend to help us understand copyright and licenses. I say you can borrow my new jumper, but I tell you that I need the jumper back on Friday. I'm only allowing you to borrow the jumper if you bring it back on Friday. That's my terms and conditions in giving you my jumper. If the jumper isn't given back to me by Friday, you won't have met my terms and I won't lend it again. I will no longer let you borrow my jumper. It's the same way with code. The terms I let you use my code on are written down and the document they're written down in is called a license. To make life simple, and so we don't have to worry about what to write in a license or trying to understand what someone means in a license, the OSI has approved standard licenses for open source software. These standard licenses always comply with the 10 points of the OSD, open source definition. Everyone who uses them gets to know them, like an old friend. Point one of the OSD, open source is for everyone, means that we cannot say everyone can have the code except Fred, because I don't like him. We can't stop an individual, organisation or company from using the code. Anyone can use the code for any purpose, so long as they comply with the licence. But there's more. Even though I only lent the jumper to my friend, they can lend it to their friend who can lend it to their friend, and so on, as long as I have it back by Friday. I wish I'd asked that they wash it now I think about it, but it wasn't in my terms. And in the same way, open source software moves from person to person to person. Everyone can use the software as long as they comply with the license. For this lesson, we're going to need a ball. If you don't have a ball, you could make one from scrunched up paper. Our project involves spinning the ball to create music. Depending on how long we spin the ball, the pitch of the music will vary. The longer the ball is spun, the higher the pitch. A short spin will create a short, low pitch noise. A long spin will create a longer, higher pitch noise. The spinning ball is sort of like our own Earth, spinning on its axis. A great big world where open source software is for everyone. In course one, we learned about functions. Functions allow the code within them to be reused multiple times without it having to be written out every time. When we use the reset function, it sets the program back to its starting state. Inside the reset function, there is a variable called count, and this needs to be set to zero every time we reset the program. When you do this, it's called initializing a variable. In order to use a function within a program, we have to call it. This is telling the function to run the code within it. Can you test this part of your code by pressing the play button on the simulator and make sure that it works correctly? Testing is an important part of coding. I hope it worked. Before we move on to the next part, I strongly recommend that you mute the make code microbit emulator until you flash the program to your microbit. If you left it on, the next part could get quite noisy. The forever block contains an if statement, which we learned about in course one, and calls the reset function. There is some pretty tricky stuff inside the if statement, but we'll go through it slowly, explaining each part in turn. The if statement checks to see if the micro bit is tilted either left or right more than 45 degrees using a new block you might not have seen before. 
The rotation roll block. The rotation roll block is a measure of how much the micro bit is tilted left and right. There is another option of rotation pitch. This is a measure of how much the micro bit is tilted forwards and backwards. There is a little bit of maths inside the if statement and it's used to change the pitch of the sound played by the micro bit. For every one eighth of a beat that the glove is spinning the ball, the pitch increases. Let's look at the maths using the first few times around the loop as an example. The first time around the loop, count is equal to zero. 20 multiplied by zero is zero, plus 100 is 100. So the micro bit will play a tone with a pitch of 100 hertz. Count is then incremented, mm, increased by one. So the next time round the loop, 20 is multiplied by one to give 20. Then add 100 to give a pitch of 120 hertz. Count increases by one. So now count is equal to two. Working through the maths a final time, 20 multiplied by two is 40 plus 100 is 140 hertz. So now we can see that every time we go around the loop, the pitch increases by 20 hertz. When we stop spinning our ball, tilt will no longer be more than 45 degrees. So we move on to the else statement. In the else statement, there is the call reset block. This resets our program to be ready for another spin. In the on start block, call the reset function. This means that when we first begin our program, it will all be set up and ready for us. Can you see how using a function reduces how much code we have to write? Instead of writing the code inside the reset function twice, once inside the forever block and once inside the on start block, we can create it once and then call it as many times as we like. It's handy to reuse code. Now it's time to flash your program to the micro bit and give it a go. Happy spinning! Our ball spinning around and around reminds me of all the planets in the solar system spinning around their axes and around each other. Mars, the planet, not the bar, is in our e-zine for this lesson. Our friends at NASA are sharing how they use open source software in the Perseverance rover landing on Mars and other stories from NASA. The Perseverance rover landed on Mars just this year in 2021 with millions of people watching across the world from lockdown. A bit closer to home, it's important to remember that for the Earth to keep spinning, we have to be considerate of our planet. That's a big part of what sustainability means, looking after our planet as we start to investigate others. So now that you have finished this first lesson, you should be able to know what the SDGs or Sustainable Development Goals are, Explain that open source is for everyone and that this is point one of the OSD or open source definition and create a program which uses the make code rotation block to spin a globe using your glove. All in a good day's work. Let's have a break and I'll see you soon for lesson two.